Hello, I'm Forrester and welcome to the second video in my Kerbal Space Program series, No Kerbals Died. The hard mode career where I look to keep our adorable green astronauts alive throughout. In this second episode, the goal is to achieve orbit with an apoapsis above 250 kilometers for the purposes of additional scientific research and bringing back some valuable research points. A successful mission will have the added bonus of giving Valentina orbital experience, which is a second pilot able to hold prograde and retrograde manoeuvres. As for design for this flight, I've used the tried and tested X3 as the basis for this launch, the X4. I've added additional solid rocket boosters to give a little extra power to compensate for the heavier payload and higher apoapsis and I've added a simple cargo bay which contains the science experiments, including a small heat shield I have to test for a contract. So, with five seconds to take off, preparing for the main engine start. And lift off. So I have the liquid fuel rocket motor and two solid boosters. Because they produce a lot of thrust, I'm just throttling down that liquid fuel engine. That's just to get those boosters firing, get the maximum altitude from those boosters, and save a little bit more liquid fuel for when we're a little bit higher in the atmosphere and it's a little bit more powerful. Here we go for boost separation. And I've been quite late this time making the gravity turn. The reason for that is just because this isn't the most stable rocket, so I wanted to head straight up just over 10 kilometers and starting to make that gravity turn now. Given that the objective of this flight is to get quite high up, I'm quite comfortable with delaying moving uh, to the gravity turn a little bit longer because I've got a bit more altitude to play with and a bit more delta V to play with. I think interestingly, the lifter rocket from here a little bit expanded from the one that I've used previously with the solid rocket boosters. I've actually added those to a list of lifter rockets that I'll be able to use for future missions. So by maintaining that list, I can keep an eye on exactly what lifter I need for a payload. There's the main engine cutoff and the upper stage deploying. And here out at 37 kilometers in altitude, just a case of building out that horizontal speed, which will help when we're looking to achieve orbit. That little Terrier engine, even though we are in the upper edge of the atmosphere, working just fine. And on the bottom right of the screen, we can see Valentina Kerman. Valentina from Valentina Tereshkova, the first woman in space from the Russian Vostok 6 mission. here at 54 kilometers in altitude again just playing around just keeping the prograde marker pretty much where I want it to in order to keep accelerating towards an orbital velocity and I've already completed one mission here by testing the heat shield which is actually located within the cargo fairing so it's not the main heat shield that will decelerate the spacecraft through re-entry. Actually, just another one I brought across just for the, the mission of the contract that was there. At this point, I'm using the map mode just to plot out my apoapsis so that the spacecraft does go above the 250 kilometer mark. That's the mark where the science gets just a little bit more effective. And that's really the goal for the space flight to bring some of that science back. As that gets to 254 kilometers, comfortable with that so plenty of fuel just going to accelerate time just to get to that 250 kilometer mark and as we approach the apoapsis there's not too much more that we need to be doing for this flight I'm going to be extending out prograde just so that we can call it an orbit that will give Valentina just a little bit of experience to be able to hold prograde and retrograde markers when we return So a very quick burn from that Terrier engine, just pumping that periapsis above 70 kilometers, and then I'll press the hotkey to get the science from here. And then a simple time walk back around. 
So at this point, I'm going to do a retrograde burn at the periapsis. That will bring the apoapsis down and reduce the speed at which I'm re-entering. Now, the heat shield that's on here will more than able to survive the, the re-entry from this speed. But equally, slower is safer. And when we're looking about Kerbal's lives, I think that's a usually a valuable thing to be. So I'm just burning off the fuel to get the periapsis down to a suitable level. And then here in, I'm going to ditch the upper stage. Interestingly possible to see two additional parachutes that are in line on the command capsule. The reason for those actually is once again for a contract. Uh, so I brought them up here just to, to hopefully get a little bit more cash in the bank. Jettison the engine. And then facing a retrograde so that, that heat shield is facing the atmosphere and will help to decelerate the spacecraft as it re-enters the atmosphere. So at this point we are deorbited and just accelerating time when we're in the very, very upper stages of the atmosphere. And that Mercury style capsule looking absolutely fantastic. A Mercury Atlas 6 was the first American orbital spaceflight using a similar style capsule to the one that I have here, way back in February 1962. Uh, that was a Friendship 7, was the name of the capsule, launched atop an Atlas, uh, Atlas 3B, uh, which achieved three orbits. Pilot for that was John Glenn. So here I'm just mixing between time warp and true physics just to keep the heat shield facing the brunt of any atmospheric pressure. And here coming through 55 kilometers in altitude, we'll very shortly be starting to see some of those atmospheric re-entry effects. I always think this is a, a part of a mission which just looks fantastic with those re-entry effects blazing on. Van Tila having a wonderful time on the bottom right there. So at this point I'm just skipping between time warp and real physics. I'm always reluctant to time warp too fast during re-entry for the simple reason that sometimes uh, it will cause unwanted explosions and certainly we don't want that when we're trying to keep our kerbals safe. I have got three parachutes on here so once it's a, a safe altitude and, and pressure to deploy the parachutes we should have plenty of, of stopping power and glide gently down to our splashdown. Of course this mission will be very very helpful for the career mode as it will entail bringing back some valuable science points. So it's it's a strange phase of the career this where it's balancing bringing back funding and bringing back science points. The funding is absolutely necessary to get some building upgrades at the Space Centre uh, in particular, the uh, vehicle assembly building, so you can have more than 30 parts. Uh, getting some launch pad upgrades, so you can launch taller and heavier rockets. As well as, uh, ultimately, saving for upgrades to the research and development centre. Uh, ultimately, that's what's going to hold us back, probably more than the science points, but you need enough science points to be able to complete those missions. So here we are, 25 kilometres in altitude, slowing down quite nicely. Uh, keeping an eye on the surface speed at 1,200 metres in second. As we slow down here, actually just reduce the control over the spacecraft. What that'll do is just let it fall more naturally and getting ready to deploy the parachutes. shoot deployment. So at this point the chutes won't fully deploy until we're just over 1,000 meters above sea level so plenty of time till we deploy those. I was just waiting to fulfill the contract conditions for it and slow it down for the parachute deploy. There we have it, lights on. 
So at this point, it's just a case of a very, very gentle descent before we approach Splashdown. Those three parachutes really just make it a very, very gentle endeavour. Three to four metres a second. It probably feels less gentle if you're inside, but in Kerbal terms, that is more than acceptable. And actually, the, the flight has gone well. We've got some science, we've achieved the missions, and Valentina has made it home absolutely fine. And get a little bit uh, tedious waiting for the time warped capsule to drop. Here it is coming down quite gently. And as we splash down, we'll look for the opportunity to do a little more science yet again. Gentle splash down, as there's an opportunity for us to do a little bit of science in the water here. So another successful mission. In conclusion, a successful mission, which has helped me to unlock the new science materials bay, as well as adding some much needed funding to our fledgling space program. So as the second episode finishes, I hope you found this video enjoyable. Please continue to like, subscribe to the channel if you aren't already, and add your thoughts in the comments. I leave you with the closing remark that I echo from the previous mission and hope to echo for every mission in this series, no Kerbals were harmed in the making of this video.